Hello, welcome to my tech fan. I'm Igor, and in this video, I'm testing the laser module for CD printers. And these three boxes are sent to me by the Creality directly. And uh, this is 10 watt uh, module, uh, if I saw correctly. This is the air assist kit, and the third box is the honeycomb uh, engraving surface. And uh, I will test it with the uh, NDS3 S1. Uh, but according to the website, it is compatible with almost every NDS3 CD printer and the 2 CD printer but I will use it with uh, this one. I'm not sure about its weight, uh, but I think uh, if you want to use it, uh, you should use uh, dual Z-axis, but uh, let's see what's in the box first. This was content of the first box. Power cable and a power adapter with output of 24 volts and 3 amperes. This is USB Type-C cable. This is the controller which will take over the operation and uh, I have to connect all the limit switches and uh, stepper motors. Mounting bracket, tools and bolts for assembling, safety glasses. And this is the laser module and it is quite uh, light, so probably we can use it without any problems with the single Z-axis like on the 3 v 2 And you can see optical power 10 watts and it has this magnetic shield. On controller we have this switch, uh, this is a button, and uh, here we have the slot for the SD card, USB-C type and the power. Now let's see the content of the second box. It's honeycomb grid, it will support the object for the cutting. And these are the distancers, because below this we have to place this steel. And from the weight I think this is from uh, stainless steel. But I'm not sure if Creality knows that aluminum is better for these purposes. But uh, it's a little bit expensive of course. And the third box. Content of the third box. The main part is uh, this uh, air compressor and I can see the power is uh, 90.5 watts and it works directly from the AC power. Hmm. A strange decision that the adjusting knob is on this side. I think it should be closer to the pump. And I notice it is very quiet. And I can almost stop next to it. I can feel the air. It's good, because usually these are, pumps are very loud. We have this um, nozzle for the air, and of course we need a new shield, because we need a space for this pipe. These are some zip ties for assembling, and this is 2 meter long pipe, with the inner diameter of approximately 5 millimeters. And I'm preparing the module with the removing of this uh, ring. And then I'm placing the ring which will hold the air nozzle. And uh, I test the orientation with this uh, second shield. And then I will tie the position with these two set screws. And I can place this protection shield. I'm installing here the distancers to this honeycomb grid. And I'm raising the z-axis because I have to install the bracket for the module. I'm removing the extruder here with four bolts. And then I noticed that we don't have completely prepared solution for NS3 S1. Probably I could mount it here, this hose, which are for the hot end, but uh, this was also threaded, so I decided to use uh, these two holes. The distance is correct. I'm not sure how stable is this solution if we have those vibrations on higher engraving speeds, but uh, we will see that in a few minutes. The module can be slide on this bracket from the bottom and it will be holded with these two screws from the side. Aha, uh -huh. this is the reason why it is from steel, so it sticks to this magnetic base. And now it is hard to remove it. Well, anyway, this goes here. I know that this is designed uh, with some printers that hot end can stay in the place, but I want to remove all the unnecessary mess during the engraving, especially if you have only one lead screw, single Z-axis. Now, I'm sure that uh, with this solution uh, we will have quite a lot of vibration with the higher speeds of the engraving. Uh, and I think uh, designing a new bracket where the mass point of this module would be approximately here uh, will reduce uh, much smaller uh, vibration and much nicer engraving. And that bracket can be even CD printed maybe. 
Now with this mounting method, it is stable in this direction, but it wobbles a little bit in this direction. But that's the problem because it will move only in X direction. In Y direction, the bed is moving. So it would be better if I would uh, mount it somehow here because uh, more stability I would have during the engraving. But we will see how it works as it is now. And all wires on X and Y stepper motor and limit switch has to be replaced with these cables which goes from this controller. And there is the middle cable too which can be left in so it is easy to replace back to the FDMC the printer. And uh, I'm a little bit confused so here it says Z but I believe that this goes to the laser module. Power cable, USB-C cable to the laptop. I'm using Laser GRBR in this video because it is free, but it is available only for Windows. Mac and Linux users can use the Lightborn, for example. If necessary, you can install here the CH340 driver, but I already used uh, this kind of controllers earlier, so I already had that installed. And uh, already some common baud ports are recognized. Let's see uh, if I go to connect. It is connected and I can move the axis. Let's try these arrows. X direction and Y direction. Okay, so controlling is working and um, now let's try to engrave something. This is the image which I always use for the first engraving and here you can see the parameters uh, 2000 mm per minute M4 dynamic power and 50% power. But I will always show you the parameters during the engraving later in the video. For setting the focus I have these distancers and it is nice that it is prepared for different thickness. So if I want to engrave I need uh, higher so the focus will be set on the top of the surface. But if I want to cut something deeper then I have to set the focus a little bit lower inside the material. And now the focus is set to the top of the surface and I'm curious, usually I tested those laser engravers where the head is moving in X and Y direction and the bed is static. But now the bed will moving uh, in this direction and I'm curious if I have to fix the position of the object or it will stay in a place by the friction and the gravity. Boundary check. Safety glasses on. And something what I expected but I didn't know that it would be so bad. So what we can see here is the vibration in this uh, X direction. So I think I have to rotate this uh, mounting record. I have to try different solutions. My problem was that this was not covered literally in the manual. I would like to mount it to the hot end holes. But the problem is that both holes are threaded. And this is something basic rule in mechanical engineering that uh, we cannot tight object if both holes are threaded. Even if I tight it completely, the bracket is not stable, it still wobbles. So I have to do some DIY solution. This is a distancer from aluminum. It can be even see the printed. The ester you can download from my website. And then two holes into the bracket. The diameter is 3.5 mm and distance between holes is 14 mm. Two holes should be on line which is perpendicular to the edge and distance should be exactly 14 mm but if you drill it with 3.5 mm then you have some space for the error and for the positioning. This is a distancer and then I am tightening this bracket with two bolts and pay attention that the bracket should be vertical compared to the build surface. And with these two bolts I can fix the position of the bracket and finally I don't have that feeling that it still bubbles. I think I could use a countersunk bolt here, then I could move the model even higher, but I think it will do the job for now. And I'm repeating the engraving with the same settings. And yes, this time very sharp and clean engraving, like it should be with any other regular engraving machines. So even if you use these two holes for the mounting, the bracket should be always installed in this direction and not in this direction, because the module moves only along the x-axis. 
Now with engraving I never use air assist. I already tested several times and uh, much cleaner images I always get if I don't use the air assist. But uh, I think it's time to move uh, to do some cutting because 10 watt laser module definitely can cut plywood or, or different type of the woods. This is 3mm thick plywood and I will do two cuttings, first without air assist and the second one with air assist and it should be much cleaner but um, let's do the testing. This side is cut and without air assist and this side with air assist and it is much cleaner the hole and even the cutting out part. Now I saw even bigger differences but even here it's quite obvious. This is 5mm thick plywood, the thickest I have at home and uh, now I'm using this uh, second step. It has thickness between 4 and 6mm. With this the focus of the laser will be just a little bit lower. And now again two cuttings but with reduced speed and uh, in this case I think the effect of the air assist will be even bigger. And this time the difference is even more obvious and I even saw partly a flame during this engraving without air assist. 3mm thick MDF and usually for this with 10 watt laser modules I need two passes. This is the first pass. And I couldn't see the beam on the other side so let's do one more pass. This is the second pass, very constant beam on the other side, only sometimes it is interrupted with this plate of the honeycomb grid. As you can see on this small area it was still holding but I just a small press and it fell out. So, Basically two passes is enough with these 10 watt laser modules like with any other regular 10 watt lasers. 3 mm black acrylic and I will try to create a hole inside this square. With 5 watt laser modules I always needed two passes and with 10 watt one pass should be enough. Yes, the beam was constantly on the other side. And as I expected, cut and in one pass. And the last test for this video will be engraving stainless steel. And I have this plate where I always use for testing, as you can see, different logos of different machines. And with this 10 watt, we should get something like this. The start and the end will be with real time speed. Before I clean it, let me show you. Uh, I forget to set the focus and uh, it started with this uh, inside of part R and zero and the left side of the one. And then I lower one millimeter the focus and then it finished much stronger. So that's why it is important to set the focus correctly. Cleaning with isopropyl alcohol. And yes, strong. Even for the filling, like at the other 10 watt laser module. This is 20 watt laser module. And now conclusions are first about this laser module. Now 10 watt diet lasers are very strong and basically this module is equal like all those 10 watt diet lasers I tested on those dedicated desktop engravers. So with buying this module, you don't have to buy the full desktop engraver and you can get the same quality, of course you have to fit in this smaller working area. Now it is very important to mount it correctly and understand that Corality cannot prepare uh, this bracket for every CD printer they have, but for example by adding these two holes uh, they can erase the compatibility because in that case it can be mounted to those uh, hot end holding holes which are there on almost every Corality printer. And it is important, of course, to mount it in proper position. So if I mount it incorrectly, I have a lot of vibrations during the engraving. I really like this separate controller because with this I don't have to update the firmware on the printer. I don't even have to turn on the printer because all stepper motors on X and Y and limit switches are connected to this controller. I am missing a little bit the screen for offline engraving if this is important for you. 
Now, suggestion to Creality, they could uh, use this possibility that they connected to CD printer. And on CD printer, we have moving Z axis. Imagine, Tenva dye laser is uh, very good for cutting, deeper cutting. But you know, uh, the focus is always set to one point. If it would be supported with the software and the hardware, so let's say we connect to the uh, Z axis too. We can do a cutting, you know, uh, very thick material we can do in several passes. And imagine we can do one pass and then go lower a little bit, do the second pass, lower a little bit, third pass. And with this, uh, it can cut really deep materials. Okay, so uh, they could use this advantage of the CD printer compared to those uh, desktop laser engravers, which uh, have that uh, Z-axis fixed. The air pump is great. It is very quiet and uh, strong enough and a very good quality pipe they give with the, with the air pump. I already saw this air pump with other brands, so I'm not sure which is rebranded. I already mentioned that the Z-axis could be moved during the engraving, uh, but at least we have very nice distancers, which is prepared for different thickness of the cutting. Okay, so this is also very rare that we don't see on other laser engravers. I really appreciate Thank you, Creality, that you turn off the fan when the laser module is not operating. Okay, it is so obvious, yes, but most of the laser engravers don't do that. So this fan is always on and sometimes it is almost louder than the air pump on the air assist. Just to avoid the misunderstandings, because Creality asked me to put some product links into the description, but those are only to the laser module. I checked the part list, uh, the air assist kit and the honeycomb green has to be purchased separately. And basically this is my experience with this uh, laser module, so uh, with this uh, you can only buy the module itself and you can get the same quality like on those uh, desktop engravers, but of course you have to fit in the size of your printer. If you have some additional experience, you know, a few lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy and safe engraving. Bye.